This is the finally completed Nautilus, and I would like to take this opportunity to say welcome aboard and uh, take you for a little tour. So we'll start down here at the bottom. Uh, the base itself, what defines it, the sub base, that is all, uh, this piece down here, that is all wrapped in black leather uh, because I really had a lot of hard surfaces with the different textures, the gloss blacks, the matte blacks, the matte whites, uh, the face plates being all brushed a grained stainless steel I really need to soften that up so I thought the black leather would tie that all together real nice and uh, I, I was real pleased with that effect uh, in the end uh, over here we have this is uh, the working this is solid brass and copper as well um, this is the little working steam engine uh, steam motor as it were uh, what I've had to do for so many reasons uh, first and foremost being safety would be uh, I substituted out instead of a working boiler with flame and real fire uh, in, instead I incorporated an air system which is fully operational on the base itself over here we have uh, all, all the switches uh, before we come over here uh, all the switches are uh, solid brass, uh, these are all real. The only styrene anywhere in this build would be in the ship itself. Uh, everything else down here is, is real and uh, believe me she's got some weight. Th this base alone with the kit on it probably comes in at about 30 pounds. Uh, so I, I really wanted everything real, everything authentic and uh, it, it definitely came through but it comes at a cost because she's she certainly got some weight to her. Uh, the knife switches themselves, these are early turn of the century uh, I, again I didn't want to go some reproduction off uh, uh, an internet site or something uh, so uh, these are authentic turn of the century knife switches and just had a really good time uh, learning what these switches are really capable of uh, just a really good time there um, so had a lot of fun this is in fact the uh, working telescope and it is nickel plated and so how it works is you'll take this cap off the top we'll set that aside see if I can pull back so it'll focus slide it up rotate it forward this little set screw right here is what would lock that in place uh, I can't do that and hold the camera on the other hand so we'll set that little guy back down so he just doesn't fall and uh, then you pull out the back and that in fact would be a working telescope that can pivot up and down slide him back down back here we have this is uh, I built this as though it was a one-to-one uh, -one scale this is a, uh, a two bank drawer uh, raised panel side uh, cherry cabinet made out of solid cherry uh, you can see I even got the dental molding up underneath the uh, slate countertop as well as the base molding going around the side. And if you open it up, oops, get my hand back there. Come on, little fella. Um, these are, in fact, lined with, you can see, crushed purple velvet. And that is to hold the removable parts that uh, I, I take off the ship when I want to view the interior. Uh, what we have is, uh, we'll take, let me just grab that other drawer and we'll do that now. So I've made the side of the ship up, up here. What I've done is I, I've taken these panels, the glass panel uh, itself, and that just goes right down here and sits in this drawer. And then if you come back up, you can remove the side of the wheelhouse itself. And then that would go in its own little drawer and go back over in the cabinet uh, for safekeeping for viewing. The base itself of the Nautilus, uh, <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Uh, got real creative here. This is a gold chain uh, that I, what I've, I've weathered out to kind of look rusted worn. And it looks, I've got it positioned as though the anchor is actually sitting about 3 16 off the base and uh, on an angle as though it just got ripped from its hold by the giant squid. And if you come around here, this one here uh, was kind of daunting because that is actually, um, let's see if I can get that in focus. 
uh, that chain again had to be link by link. Um, I had to take that gold chain and manipulate each link and, and get it in position and keep it and to stay like that to keep give it that uh, animated look as though it just got ripped from its stay and it's flailing through the water. So uh, <laughs> that, that, that was quite a challenge and uh, a very fun day, I must say. Um, if we come around, see if we can show it. I'm trying not to go all the way around the ship. Um, and back there you have, uh, there you can see the gold gleaming. That is a solid gold nugget uh, where the gold is leaking out from the closed chest. And if you look back in there, you'll see the actual treasure chest uh, with the lid flying off of it. Um, and that is where the other four clear white diamonds are back in there. As well as, let's see if we can catch a sparkle. There it is. If you look at the sparkle in his eye. There is the fifth white diamond. And there's a good shot at the little anchor chain right there. So if we come around, uh, the, the ship doesn't have a lot of features, uh, but it was uh, it was certainly something that had to be thought out as far as how it all got wired. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of features, and, and a lot of it I tried to keep colors and pantones correct. Um, so let's see if we can dim the lights a little bit. And let's fire up the Nautilus. So to start the ship, we're going to want to give power to the entire base. And that brought up the... Uh, RGBW that I put on the base. Uh, I, I did use RGBW because it has a, a lot more properties. I, I can do a lot more with it. I can run a lot more programs with it, but I did not run the LED uh, microcontroller that would run all the values of the RGB itself so I can adjust uh, individual Pantones. I really didn't need to do that, So, but I, I did need the uh, expanded features of the RGBW. So that explains the RGBW over the RGB, um, but without the LED processor, um, if that makes any sense to anybody. Um, so that being said, um, as you can see, when it comes on, what I've done is uh, the, the set scene is you, you've just walked up on the Nautilus. Um, there's a a, a, a tale of vast riches beyond your belief on this uncharted uh, outcropping on the ocean floor. Uh, Captain Nemo has obviously found this and he's obviously figured out why it's, it's considered unattainable. So uh, what has happened, what we've walked on is uh, the squid has taken the ship and obviously knocked out the main generators. And what we need to do is uh, address that situation and then probably post haste uh, take our leave. So what we'll do from here is we will check our right now we're in the main uh, we're running off our main generators so what we'll do is we'll pull that back we'll throw that knife switch and we'll pull that back to our auxiliary generators and then we'll turn on the salon lights and hopefully our auxiliaries are working and they are okay so what that'll do is that'll bring up the ceiling lights um, It'll bring up the uh, the green effects, and I've done all that with uh, this is again uh, all done. And you'd have to see in there the the backs of the walls are all illuminated and glowing in a, uh, a purple pulsation. Um, that's all done with LEDs. I've got one front and back, um, as well as the down hatch itself that goes down and into the corridor. That's all done with a five mil and diffused again with lighting gels um, that you would use to light up like a PAR or a gobo or something in stage lighting because you can get a lot of colors with uh, certain LEDs uh, but if you want micro pantones uh, we all know there's certain hues you're not just going to get with LEDs and you there's only one way and that's old school gels um, so that's what I did uh, all over I stacked gels and that's how I got some of the effects that I got doing this uh, the ceiling in there again is uh, LED tape, and that is just uh, that is set. 
it, it's not showing on the camera right now, but it, it's really kind of an antique brown. And again, that's a very good example of a color you're just not going to get with LEDs. Uh, you've got to go to gels to get that, that effect itself. Um, the next switch down, what this switch is going to do is uh, it's going to illuminate um, the helms and it's going to illuminate this illuminated scale model within the scale model and all the fiber optic bookcases. Uh, the helms are also done with fiber optics as well and uh, as the scale model, all the effects on the scale model. So that would bring those on. Uh, I do have it wired to where I can turn the salon on independently as well to view those effects um, because if I turn off the salon you can't see that all the bookcases the book on the on the secretary over there as well as there it is you can see the green casting on the wall and the salon lighting that is the illuminated scale model inside the illuminated scale model. So then if we come up here, uh, this bank over here would be, uh, what I've done is I put that in uh, obvious order. Uh, this, this one up here uh, is obviously going to light, your top switch is obviously going to light your top navigation light. The next switch down is going to light your side observations and I think it goes without saying that we're, we're mirror imaging on the other side uh, this effect here is obviously happening on the other side everything you're seeing here is uh, mirrored over um, and the last switch again in that three switch bank let's see if we can get instead of looking up um, we'll look down at the reflection and you will see in fact when I turn that switch on the bottom search light comes on um, you can see that right there. It just came on. Uh, you can see the reflection. And there he is, up under there. What we have here, uh, this top switch here, um, if we flip this, what happens is that illuminates. the boilers on the side and you can see that is all done with uh, five millimeter LEDs and I've got a few other tricks up my sleeve and what that does is uh, if you get close enough I've got a 60 mesh um, covering that grate that louvered grate and behind that 60 mesh um, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve that uh, not only is it, it casting the LED but it it does give the illusion that there are flames actually flickering across the back um, so it's really cool when you get right up on it and look at it. Uh, it turned out really well. And then to fire up the little motor, before we do that, because you won't be able to hear uh, over here, um, the screw does, in fact, screw propeller, um, depends on who you talk to, uh, the screw, the propeller, you can see it's sitting static. So if we pan back. We'll take this knife switch and I'm going to throw it forward. You'll see, in fact, the, the screw. And there it goes. The Nautilus is running. And then, probably one of my favorite parts of this whole build. It's right here. So first we'll turn on the air system. We'll open up our valve. And that's the Nautilus. I appreciate you letting me share this. Um, I apologize profusely for my camera. 
Uh, again, I'm a, I, I build scale illuminated models. I'm not a videographer. Um, but from Mike's junkyard models, as we always say, stay illuminated and always, always keep shining.